Yo, 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 it's your boy Indigo. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to Real Good News, where all the news we report on is real, and it's all good. And before we get into the programming, I need y'all to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon on the side so y'all can get all the updates on the latest and greatest stuff we got going on at House of Vibes, and I appreciate you. Chill. Today, we're going to touch on a story that hits close in the city that I call home, Dallas, Texas. Violent crime, including murder, burglaries and gang activity has been on the rise for the last couple of years matter of fact last year was our worst year statistically since 2005 and this year ain't even over yet but it looks like we're already on track to have another brutally violent and record-setting year but you know what we about at the house of vibes so let's get to the good news this past saturday around brunch time the dallas violence interrupter partnership hit the streets for the very first time meeting up at the AutoZone store on 2849 East Ledbetter Drive to begin canvassing the neighborhood with their community outreach efforts. What's the Dallas Interrupters, you say? Let me break it down for you. Back in January, due to all the violence in the streets, Mayor Eric Johnson brought together a task force as one of four approaches the city would take to reduce the high rate of violent crime in the city aside from police involvement. Violence Interrupters are a coalition of members of the community comprised of activists and counselors, but in many cases, ex-offenders and former gang members whose purpose is to build relationships with the residents within Dallas' most violently affected zip codes and offer them alternatives to violence and crime. They're hired and trained by the city so they can go back to the hood and talk to the young people with hopes that they can ease tensions. Their goal is to curb violence before it goes there. A member of the Violence Interrupters and former gang member Anton Lucky states, we are connecting with members of the community that want to help, and we're allowing them to lead the way. People that put their life behind them can earn the trust that police might not get from the neighbors. They know who and who's not committing crimes, and they also know who's trying to help, so that unique perspective gives them leverage. Rod Brunson, a professor at the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice at Northeastern University, would seem to agree. He states, and I quote, the important aspect of it is the increased legitimacy and trust. He continues, no matter how well designed, or how well intended police departments are. The community needs to be a meaningful, important, and prioritized stakeholder at the table, end quote. Urban Specialists is a nonprofit organization that's partnering up with the Violence Interrupters Program. While addressing outreach to the youth in the worst neighborhoods, Urban Specialist Big Milk states, it's very important that they see a group of people that looks like them. Urban Specialist Bishop Omar Jawar states that these individuals Speaking of the violence interrupters need to be extremely intrusive to those individuals that are violent. So this week they're going door to door in East Oak Cliff. They'll spend 90 days there and then move to another neighborhood. It should be known that the violence interrupter program is not a new idea. It actually originated in Boston in the early 1990s. And there are similar programs that have shown to be effective around the country in cities like Oakland, New York, Chicago, and Detroit, where our current Dallas City Police Chief Renee Hall is originally from. In Chicago, the Cure Violence Initiative, which is a similar program that also deploys interrupters into the city's most dangerous neighborhoods, saw a 38% decrease in homicides. In Baltimore, a 56% decrease was seen in the neighborhoods where they deployed their own version of violence interrupters. Dallas Police Chief Renee Hall, who will be stepping down from her position at the end of the year, had a similar plan that would deploy interrupters into Dallas' most violently stricken neighborhoods in conjunction with the Dallas Police Department in what she called Project Ceasefire. Where the mayor's plan differs from the chief of police is that the mayor's plan deploys the interrupters in conjunction with and as employees of the city, not the police department, like the chief of police plan. This approach is presumed to be more quickly accepted by members of the community. And it looks like the mayor's plan is only going to cost about $750,000, at least for the violence interrupters aspect. Other aspects of the mayor's plan include better lighting and remodeling of broken down or abandoned buildings in high crime neighborhoods, as well as utilizing schools to deliver support groups that teaches kids to pause and think before they act. But we'll see how all that works out with this ongoing pandemic we're going through. I know there are going to be some people that say the mayor could have been doing more or that he should have been doing more sooner. And that may be true. I just let the people who like to argue about politics figure that one out. Because anybody that knows me knows that I try to stay out of politics. I just give people their props when I feel like they deserve it. Kudos to the mayor for working with the city council and members of the community to address the violent crime that's been rampant in our neighborhoods. I like the approach that he's taking by hiring ex-criminals and former gang members and giving them an opportunity to make amends for some of the destruction they've caused in the past. Everybody deserves a shot at redemption, and we're not going to make any progress within our community if we don't learn how to show each other compassion. 
hell, a lot of us are still out here committing crime and we just ain't got caught yet. I'm going to end on this. Like Marcus Estelle, also known as Big Milk, say, and I quote, the same streets that I helped destroy, I got to build. So that very thing that caused my demise has caused my rise, end quote. <laughs>